Hello and welcome to VEX Robotics for Competition, a tutorial for new teams, presented by McCallum Robotics of Austin, Texas, Team 8756. This portion of the tutorial will cover issues regarding wiring the robot. The first step in wiring is having a plan. You'll see here a sketch plan view of my robot with the motors indicated with boxes that have a simple name to them. I've then made a list of 1 to 10. These will represent the motor ports on the Cortex. You'll notice the list has port 1 and port 10 circled. Those are the two wire ports on the Cortex, so motors wire directly into them. And then motors 2 through 9 on the Cortex require a motor controller to connect the motor to the Cortex. You'll also notice the diagram is split 1 to 5 and 6 to 10. The Cortex effectively has two circuit breakers, and motors 1 through 5 are on one and 6 to 10 on the other. It's potentially useful to consider this when you're wiring your build to give yourself limited functionality in the rare case that one of the two circuit breakers fails. So you'll see I've split the drive motors between the two sides and the arm motors between the two sides. In the end, depending on where your motors are arranged on the build and where you're placing your Cortex, there will be a logical way to arrange your motors and having this list to work from when programming your build is critical. Cortex placement. So we've got our build set up. We have a sense of where our motors are going to go when they're wired. We now need to consider exactly how we're going to place the Cortex because there's some, uh, some issues regarding that. Uh, you want to have lots of space around the VEX neck key. Uh, this would be a good configuration because there's uh, not a lot of metal around it. Uh, this is not bad, but um, you probably want to avoid it. This is also just fine. You could store it vertically, that's fine, but it's a bad idea to go uh, hanging the VEXNET key because it could come loose in play and then you have no communications. So we need to get all of our motors into these ports. Uh, the two wire uh, motor ports go straight in and then we have a bunch of motor controllers to connect. So near the cortex, we're going to need to have these wires uh, uh, attached to the base. We also, of course, have to have a battery attached. And this uh, cable cannot be altered. So it has to be this distance from the motor. And this configuration, I think, will be fine. I can plug it in here and easily mount it somehow on this rail. And that way, I'll be able to easily get to my battery, which I'll need to do fairly frequently. I also want to be able to get to the switch. This configuration would allow that. You wouldn't want to have it set in such a way that it was really hard to get at the switch. We also need to have the backup battery. Uh, it's a standard two wire, so you could uh, extend it and put it just about anywhere on the robot. It needs to attach to this point, and, and using the base wire is pretty efficient because it's fairly long. Somewhere around in here, I'll be able to get that two wire. I'm also I'm also planning on having the uh, LCD sometime at the end of this build. So it might go here on the top and it would still reach. That would leave the wire loose and also means that I might grab it and squish it when I'm lifting the robot. I'll probably mount some sort of plate to hold it later on, but I realize I can get to it. That should be fine. And the last consideration, it is possible to have a second battery. So I've got my main battery here. You can extend power with one of these. Normally you'll put it to the side near the uh, motor ports because you're going to bridge across from the expansion to the motor ports. Uh, it's an oddball length. We usually attach some uh, small piece of VEX metal with a little bit of a spacer and then we can mount it um, more in the middle of where the, where the device is. And if I did choose to add battery power, I should be able to mount this battery on the inside and that would be fine. So it looks like if I have my Cortex here, I should be fine. I'm going to want to get the motor controllers in on this back plate. I'll do that and then we'll come back. So now I've got my Cortex in place. Uh, it fit nicely right where we planned on it. I uh, ended up building a battery mount. Uh, the battery can simply uh, be dropped in like that and then reach to connect. The batteries uh, can also be mounted with these straps. But what can happen is if it's stored vertically, 
the battery can actually push on the release tab as it moves, as the robot is moving around in the competition, and loosen. So we often end up making some sort of mechanical arrangement to hold the battery. I've got all my uh, motor controllers in place. I was able to put four of them on the back rail. They're numbered based on the diagram I had, and I put the uh, drive motors on the back of this rail. And then the lift motors are on the front of the rail. I've also numbered all the motors based on our diagram. The motor controllers can almost all reach the cortex without an extension. These two will require a short extension wire to connect. The last bit of advice on wiring your uh, robot is to go one motor at a time. So you go take your number two motor and you connect it to its number two motor controller and then you connect the motor controller to port number two. By going one at a time, it's actually a lot less confusing than wiring everything and then trying to get these in the right place. Wiring. So now I'm ready to wire my motor that's gonna to go to port two. Uh, now is a great time to make a final check of the wires. As you're wiring them, make sure that they're, um, the insulation is good down the length of all the wiring. If there's, um, the metal exposed, and it often happens at this joint at the motor, it can become frayed. Uh, they can short, and if they short, they will ruin the motor connector they're connected to. And if they're connected directly to the cortex and the two-wire port, they can damage the cortex. So make sure you have good insulation down all your wiring. So I need to connect motor two. I need to run it in a path that I can uh, strap it down neatly later. So I don't really want to run around the outside here, I'm going to push it up through the center of the tower. And then I'm connecting to motor controller 2. I want to run it so the black wire goes straight through. If you reverse these, it actually just reverses the signal to the motor. So you can actually uh, kind of alter your program by doing that. Uh, if your motor is turning backwards, uh, check your wiring and make sure you didn't wire it backwards. Now I need to extend my motor controller to the cortex. Same concept, black wire runs straight through, red and white ones run straight through. And then I'm going to port two, and there's a simple rule, the black wire is always on the outside of the cortex. So I installed port 2. And if I wanted to, I could start strapping these down. I'm going to wait a while because I want to make sure that I have a good path for everything before I strap it. These connections can easily come loose. So you'll also want to run a little bit of tape around each of the connections so that they remain secure during competition. Okay, wiring is now complete. So a couple things to note. Uh, I've wired the bundles, um, strapped down the bundle for each motor controller separately. And this is so that if I ever needed to replace a motor or trace the wiring back to the cortex, it's easier to uh, access for replacement and easier to trace because they're not bundled together. Another note is that when you are wiring any portion of your robot that moves, you need to be sure to physically move it through its full range of motion so that you know that you have enough wire and that it doesn't bind and it can't get trapped in a moving point. Also, um, be sure to buy zip ties in bulk. They're rather expensive when you buy them in packs of 100. Be sure to buy them in large quantities. Thousands is not unreasonable. You will use a lot of zip ties. So we're now ready to move on to the next step and that will be programming the robot for driver control. Thank you for watching.